and our next speaker is a sister who's been marching the streets, visiting occupied land, speaking up for justice for Palestinian Sister Karen Rodman. Shukran Ali, Shukran Ali, Assalamu alaikum. It is my honor to be with you here today. First, let me express that my thoughts go out to all the people from Kashmir who have not been able to be in touch with your family and friends over the last two weeks. How many people here are from Kashmir? We are. All we are. Until Kashmir is free, we all are from Kashmir. Let me start with a, a few simple facts. Facts that this crowd does not need to know, but do need to be heard loud and clear by the international community, and in particular by our Canadian government and our Canadian media. Shame! Number one, the state of Jammu and Kashmir is recognized as disputed territory by both the United Nations and under international law. Number two, no state, no state has a legal right to unilaterally change that status. Shame. 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 Modi's August 5th declaration that revoked Article 370 and 35A of the Indian Constitution is illegal. The, the unilateral abrogating of Article 370 by India revoked the guarantee of special status to Jammu and Kashmir. Article 370 was the contract between Kashmir's leadership and India. Had that contract not been signed, Kashmir would not have acceded into, to India in 1947. The revoking of Article 35 opens a floodgate, a floodgate for a settler colonial project of moving the occupier, the occupier India's own population into Jammu and Kashmir. Shay! mirroring the illegal settlements of the Israeli Zionist military state in Palestine. Shame! Shame! We are now entering the second week of complete and indefinite, indefinite lockdown of 12 million people of Kashmir. Shame! The people of Kashmir are forbidden to venture outside their homes preventing them from access to food, medicine, and freedom of movement. This is in violation of the Fourth Geneva Convention. This action is a war crime. Say it loud, a war crime. Kashmir was already the most militarized region in the world. India already had 700,000 troops in Kashmir. Shame! Shame! The world may be... In the last two weeks, India rushed tens of thousands of additional troops into the uh, Kashmir area, bringing up to nearly a million troops. That's equivalent to one jundi for every ten people. One jundi, one soldier for every family. Shame! Yeah. Over the last 20 years, Indian occupation troops have murdered more than 95,000 people of Kashmir. Rape of women have been used as an instrument of war. Thousands of Kashmiris, including youth, have simply disappeared. I had the opportunity
opportunity to read a report from the Federation of International Human Rights, which had a four-person team go into Kashmir. They were able to access Kashmir last week on the dates of August 9th to 13th. My friend uh, Shawan, the general manager from Al Haq, who's also the chair of that international committee, sent us that report. He reported that hundreds of boys and youth need to build everything, right? No, it's too long. Okay. Are being picked up currently in night raids, creating terror for families, families who are afraid to speak of abduction in case their children will simply disappear. What is also shameful is that the United Nations Security Council for the first time in 50 over 50 years put Kashmir on the agenda but simply shunted it back to India as an internal matter. Shame! Shame! As has been said, Canada played a leading role in formulating the United Nations Security Council resolution back in 48 calling for an internationally supervised referendum. 71 years later, the people of Jammu and Kashmir wait for that referendum. So what do we do? Over the last two, th last two weeks, 2,000 letters have been sent to Prime Minister Trudeau asking him to instruct the Canadian Ambassador to the United Nations, Mark Andrew Blanchard, to work tirelessly to demand an immediate, an immediate solution. Sorry. Okay. Uh, and end the aggression in the region for a joint resolution on Kashmir, including five urgent and immediate points. I am wrapping up, but let me say those five urgent and immediate points are an end to the immediate lockdown and violence against the Kashmiri civilians, ensuring the right of expression of free press and free association and assembly. Number three, immediate restoration of basic human rights of movement, food, education, health, and work. Restoring social and cultural rights and restoring dignity of lives without persecution, without insult, and without fear of intimidation. And, and establishing a United Nations Special Rapporteur to ensure accountability to ensure accountability and implementation of international law and human rights in regard to Kashmir. So far as we've heard, what we've heard back from Minister Freeland is, um, is uh, just uh, the status quo. Shame. 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 She missed the point. She missed the point that India has and is systemically violating human rights and committing war crimes. Here in Canada, the Special Economic Measures Legislation, a particular act that is supposed to hold Canada to higher standards, is in place. This legis Shame when it's not used for the right reasons. Shame when it's used to put sanctions on Syria. Shame when it's used to put sanctions on Libya and on Venezuela and other countries. We, we currently have we currently have 23 countries that Canada has sanctions on. 11 of them are under the Special Measures Act. Over the last year, Just Peace Advocates, the organization um, that I'm with, has uh, been calling for a campaign called Gaza 2020 to put sanctions on until the uh, blockade on Gaza is lifted. I call us to join in unity and call for sanctions on Israel and on India to call for those sanctions for Kashmir and Jammu until the people of Jammu and Kashmir